Welcome guys, in this video we are going to be showing you how to paint 3D printed terrain quick and easy. Welcome guys, Top Table Steve here. This is a bit of a follow-up video to our review video that we did for Whitefoot 3D Designs. Uh, we are going to show you guys how to paint 3D printed terrain. Um, it's going to be a nice, easy, quick tutorial. Uh, nothing too technical. All you need is an airbrush, a dry brush and some washes and you're away. So without further ado, let's get on the table and get cracking. So here I start off with a primer filler uh, from High Coat. You can get any brand. After that, I'm hitting it with Vallejo Surface Primer, uh, pure black. Uh, even though we're gonna get a quite a light ruin, um, I do start off with a black base coat and build up from there. Uh, the Vallejo base coats are really nice and paint really does adhere to them really, really well. So once we're fully black, I then get the Panzer Gray, which is a, obviously a gray and it's a little bit lighter than the black. And I'll start just sort of pre-highlighting some of the areas uh, the higher cobblestones on the staircase, uh, the edges of the steps and things like that, the corner of the actual wall section, um, and this just gives me a visual aid for when I come in with the, the brighter colours rather than trying to go directly over black. Going in with three colours, um, I'm going to end up with like an off-white. Uh, you can choose any colours you want. I use Vallejo Air colours here. I uh, started at Sand Ivory. Uh, and ended up with white grey model air. Uh, so this is the sand ivory going on and straight away uh, when you use the airbrush it makes life a lot easier for you. You can start to see the effects that are happening. Now you'll probably notice that when I'm spraying with the airbrush I never actually go in from um, directly on sidewards uh, or from like the lower part of the model. I'm staying high, I'm putting my airbrush down and the reason for that is I want to try and keep some of the darker black or grey um, in the um, sort of recesses and in between uh, the brick design as best that I can because that just creates a shadow, a natural shadow anyway. So here I'm going on with my second colour and as you can see that the ruin is getting lighter and lighter and it's starting to take shape. Um, I'll go over the edges of the steps. Uh, I'll pick out the edges of the cobblestones again with every lighter colour that I go. I'll start picking out certain individual blocks in the block work and on the flag work of the ground just to make it stand out that little bit more. Now I'm going in with my final colour which is the grey white and this will pull it all together. This is going to give me that highlight that I need to work from using the dry brush. As you can see it creates a nice effect and we've gone from a black ruin to a off-white cream ruin in pretty much no time whatsoever and this is the beauty of using an airbrush. Uh, the paint dries very quick, it goes on very thin and smooth and you can just kind of w keep working with it, keep working with it. Um, it was quite warm in my man cave when I was doing this and I was having a, a little bit of a problem of, of speckling of the paint. You've probably noticed that I changed my airbrush. Um, about halfway through um, but it didn't affect uh, the overall outcome if anything it added a little bit of texture to some of the stonework. So here I'm picking out the flag areas just highlighting each flag and then I'll go on the front of the wall and I'll start picking out just the odd the odd brick uh, and highlight that and I'll do that all around the model. Um, the reason for that is as I start putting the washes on at a later stage, um, it's not just going on onto like one flat white colour um, and it, the, the, the shade runs into the recesses um, and it, can, it makes the individual blocks stand out. So I do that as much as I can, just creating a little bit of variation in the colour and it makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. So now we're getting some of the white dry brush on there and this is just to give us a really nice contrast and make the edges of the block work pop. Uh, when I dry brush, as you can see, I hold, hold the brush towards the end and I'm just flicking it very, very lightly. Um, you can be tempted here to go in quite rough, which creates a chalky effect, which is what we don't want. Um, so I'm keeping uh, minimal paint on my brush. I'm drying it off, as you can see there on my hand when it feels like there's a little bit too much. And I'm just flicking the edges straight onto the washes. Uh, I am going to be using a Thonian Camel Shade first 
Uh, and in a moment, when I get my hand out of the way, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so I'll go in with the green first. It kind of creates the effect of like moss and dirt and muck and things like that. Um, I'll have it dripping down from the the, uh, the top flagstones, like you can see here. This creates the effect of uh, if there's been rain, uh, it's gathered on the flagstones, pulled all the dirt out of the joints and dragged it down the wall. Uh, as we know, as Gilliath is on the um, borders of a river, so there would be a lot of moss and dirt and muck, uh, things of that kind in and around uh, the ruins. And the Athonian camo shade is like a greeny brown. It's a really nice natural colour. Uh, it's one of my favourite shades to use. I use it on pretty much everything. If I'm doing wood, I use it on wood. If I'm doing um, grey rocks, I'll use it on grey rocks. <clears throat> Most things that I paint somewhere will have Athonian camo shade on it if I want it to, to grub it up and make it look a little bit dirty. So here now I'm going in with some of the old school Agrax, just hitting parts that I've not hit with the Athonian camo shade, just creating a bit of shadow uh, and a bit of shade here between the flags. Um, mix when, it, when you mix them in wet, if you keep your Athonian camo shade still wet and you go in with your Ag Agrax, you do get a nice colour. Um, a tip there if you are doing kind of grey brickwork and things like that is to add in a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue and it creates a really nice effect. It would have been too much on this with the stonework being so light, so I did not use purple or blue on this. It was just the uh, browns and the greens, and as you can see, it's looking really, really nice. Now I start to stick on tufts. I have selections of tough. I don't use anything in particular. I use some greens, I use some browns, uh, I use some like scrubland effect tufts, uh, and these are just the finishing touches. These are what make a very basic piece of terrain come to life. Um, tufts are great, I love tufts, I could never have enough tufts. Sometimes I have to stop myself attaching them to things. <laughs> uh, tufts are great. Um, I make some on my own, some of them are bought. Um, I do always have a drawer full of different shades, different colours, different sizes. Um, so yeah, um, I, I think I'll do a video soon uh, showing you how to create your own tufts. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. Um, but yeah, that just finishes it off and um, I'm really, really happy with how it looks. So we'll have a look at some stills now and you can see the effect uh, with some models in position. And that's it guys, that just shows you that you can come off with a really nice, really effective result without too much effort. Altogether that probably took about 10-15 minutes. Um, I'm going to go away and do the rest of the terrain and I'm going to start planning the board. So watch out for that video uh, where we build a, a Skillia style ruined town board um, using the terrain from uh, Whitefoot 3D and painting it the way that I've just shown you. See you soon.